Oi, wanna hear about chili and rice, fish, and the growth of my little glowworm army? Then stay tuned. Welcome to Peppers and Glowworms, a channel dedicated to hot chili peppers and coldly glowing glowworms. <coughs> This is vidlog number 46. It will give you some updates about my latest chili pepper cross, the Ahi Charipa, and how I keep some of them in an aquaponic way, together with my little rice fishes, and how my glowworm colony is growing. Those are some second and third generation Japanese rice fish, mostly of Amber Lame heritage. I took them inside for the winter, into an old aquarium, which I'm also using to cultivate some snails as food for my glowworms, more on that later. But uh, this setup also has the function of raising my latest chili pepper cross. And I'm doing this in an aquaponic way. You can see those empty yogurt containers, three of them each. And there are the plants. And if you look a little bit further, You can see, oh, there's snow. It's winter outside, and despite this, the plants grow quite well, even in the natural sunlight. The nitrate level in this tank is a little bit too high for a normal aquarium, but on the other hand, nitrite I could not even detect, so I'm assuming this means that the nitrogen cycle is running smoothly and is providing my plants with nutrients. And it should still be okay for the rice fish. You can see they have grown nicely and also the other plants of the Ahi Charipa, which is a cross between the Ahi Charapita and the Carolina Reaper chocolate. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, and the uh, aquarium sand that I had left over seems to work as a substrate. Oh yeah, and uh, one more thing. I noticed that the plants are somewhat fragrant. Especially when I touch them, they emit a smell not unlike a wild uh, chiltepine. Weird, but interesting. In order to start the medaka season early, I have prepared a separate tank, complete with artificial light and a little bit of heating, and I have selected four medaka rice fish for breeding. Uh, one of them was an individual that was always very noticeable, because it had a very much more orange coloration than the others. And he turned out to be male, and here is he together with three females, and I hope that they will start breeding soon. And because I always like things to have multiple purposes, I will be also using this tank to grow some more snails. Especially my bladder snail population could uh, use some restocking, they uh, almost went extinct. And what happened to them? Oh, well, um, they got eaten by 300 hungry glowworm larvae. Those are the first generation 22 larvae of my Sardinian glowworms that I separated. And you can see the enclosure is getting kind of messy and unfortunately they also carried the mites from their original enclosure with them. So it's time to rehouse them. Not only have I already found almost all 300 of them, but there are also constantly new larvae hatching from this first wave of egg clutches, as you can see here. Some fresh larvae, some older larvae, unfortunately again some mites, but they seem to be harmless phoretic mites. Anyway, let's rehouse them into a more sterile setup in order to get rid of those mites. Mini time lapse. <laughs> Meanwhile, the older mature larvae of the previous generation continue to pupate. Uh, like for example here we have a smaller individual, most likely a male in the typical posture when they are about to pupate. Slight disturbance induced glow. And I will pick it up. Yep. 
into the mail box. Some empty chrysalis and here we have the adult male that just slipped out of it. And meanwhile some larvae have pupated. Here's one. And there's another fresh pupa. Let's remove the old larval skin to have it neat and tidy. So larvae, pupae and adult male. Let's pick him up. And off into the reproductive box, so to speak. I have prepared this one with quite a few males already. And there's a female. It should already have mated. But wait, there's more! More empty chrysalises. One. And two. And of course this means two more adults. Two more adult females. I will pick them up. One. And two. And what I do now is I put them in an enclosure that is very well aerated and a bit more on the drier side and I wait for them to glow. Ah, there we go! There was a machine in the early unit of 